week on Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. For the lava flying spaghetti monster, don't run DNF. Seriously, it will eat your children. And another Skype competitor has appeared. But Grandma doesn't use it, so it's a bit DOA. Apparently you can crash system D in under 140 characters, so let's scream that to the heavens before it gets a chance to be fixed. And secure your help with the secure your box with the help of Big Brother. Wait, what? And both major Linux desktop receive an upgrade. Yes, I did imply that XFC wasn't major. Um, also receive, receiving an update, Blender. It's so big and professional now. Mm -mm -mm. That's great. I'm Vince Stoughton here at um, what we like to call LGC Actual. We're switching the bits. We do this show completely under Linux. And this week we're doing it on YouTube because we normally do it on the Twitches, but Twitch is going to Twitch and it decided to do it nine minutes before um, we went live, but all the way from Space Canada. <laughs> Hello, I'm Pedro Mateus. You might remember me from such shows as this one. <laughs> okay, that's horrifying. <laughs> And welcome to LA, baby. It's Matthew Kamal. You don't want to let that um, French accent confuse you, man. He's Hollywood, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, born and born and bred. Yeah. You will have to deal with it. It's frightening, and terrifying. But gentlemen, let's just get right into the Linux news because we have a public service announcement. This just before we went live. Jordan, everything's burning. It's on fire. I mean, if you do a. Uh, Duke Nukem Forever update uh, on your fedoras, it will implode the box, correct? I, well, I don't know. This, this seems to be a recent thing. Uh, Adam Williamson from the Fedora QA department, a guy I've had a couple beers with, uh, put up this thing that says, if you're going to run updates uh, using DNF on your Fedora box, do it from a virtual terminal, because apparently there is some crashiness involved with, uh, the, upgrade, with the upgrade process. Apparently, there are some issues where if the virtual terminals crash, or some other process crashes while uh, while the upgrade is going on, you may not get a clean reboot. Uh, I've been running DNF upgrades from a GUI from, for the past three Fedora versions and have not run into any issues, mm -hmm. but apparently people are reporting duplicated packages and kernel updates not working, so that is a thing. Hmm. Yeah, I have had similar issues in the past, not for Fedora 24 because I haven't tried this one yet, but... I have broken uh, the packet manager in Fedora in strange and unusual ways. And sometimes I wasn't able to recover from it at all. That is not a complaint, man. On Fedora, we call that learning experience. I mean, that's, that's I, just... I've broken the or, Debian or paid packages. Research. Uh, I've broken Debian or Ubuntu in strange ways too, but I've, I was always able to, to recover from it. It was quite easy. Uh, what bothers me here is that, and if you read the thread on the mailing list, they are not so focused on fixing the bug, the crash, but they are focusing on telling users not to not to run DNF in in X, I know, which is I don't know. I, I read through, I read through that comment uh, thread oh, for a little bit in the in the five minute side to prep for this episode and it looks like a lot of people were discussing possible solutions and various pros and cons to handling these sorts of uh, issues yeah okay but, help me out with this so, so basically what they're saying is what is there some type of gui tool in fedora that people actually use? uh yes package uh well not not even that um it's just uh there's there's a utility called package kit which allows for offline upgrades hmm. um and dnf has some of this functionality built in as well um, but the, the, the issue here is, um, running just the DNF command line utility in a GUI virtual terminal is problematic, I guess. Mm -hmm. There, I, there, there's talk of this has always sort of been an issue, but it's apparently coming to a forefront now of all times. Right. Uh, so, so do you, uh, I think what Linux near you've got to put in there is like everyone who is on team yum, we're like, see, told you, ah. <laughs> Well, they, they gave Yum a couple of distros to get phased out, and now Yum DNF is just an alias to Yum. But well, let's go I from mean, little tiny teeny bugs to big bugs. Uh, big bugs. So, uh, last minute code contributions working in the financial industry. I know how they can bring down systems, and Linus Torvalds learned how to do learned that lesson as well. Apparently, there was a uh, last minute change to the four point eight release candidate uh, that was recently published. Uh, that can cause a kernel crash because of the use of a bug on flag, 
which um, usually kills the kernel. It's used as a development tool and was not actually was not actually removed. So in in the circumstance involving uh, something involving swap, I didn't actually read through the entire dump. Uh, you can actually get a kernel kill, and that is bad. That'll crash your system. And Linus goes on this whole rant about how this should not be used in the first place. It should be removed from the kernel. It was stupid to begin with. You should be spitting out warning messages, and that's it, because the kernel is a critical system component. It should fail gracefully. Uh, but this made it in, and uh, there's they're working on a fix inbound. Though the distribution of this has not been so widespread just yet, so it's a fairly mitigated issue. Yeah, I mean, uh, before it gets... Uh before 4.8 hits any merger or distro, uh, it will get patched like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's probably already patched right now. So um, almost no one going to, to get affected by this. Maybe Arch Linux users, because they get the, the updates quite quickly, but uh, I mean, or you know what, I mean, Reading from the, the post here, it seems that the, the bug resides in swap.h. So do like me and don't use swap. Um, no, uh, I think Jordan has a little learned uh, to use swap. I still don't use swap, but this is more of a do as I say, not as I do scenario, because I know the risks involved and I make the proper system changes to mitigate any lack of swap issues by essentially nuking my swabbiness. But it's usually good to have at least about 500 megs of swap in your system because certain low level kernel operations expect it to be there. And it can that cost and it. some video games uh, will yeah, take yeah, your some, system Some video games that are massive memory leaks. Yes, which we learned the hard way. But you know, that's one thing um, the Linus was definitely on. He was like, this needs more extensive testing. And my first was, they, do, 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 they still make four gigabyte DIMMs where you could get it that low to constantly hit swap. But um, yeah, that's a thing. I, I like swappiness. I normally keep like a couple of gigs of, because SSD swappiness and storage is cheap, man. Why not? It's a safety net. Doesn't hurt anything. And beautiful, beautiful example of Linus being Linus and why I love him. Hashtag NVIDIA. Up next. <laughs> oh, yes. See, this is a really bad title, because if you're going to call it How to Crash System D in one tweet, this better be a Twitter-based exploit. But no, he means in under Listen, man, I can take this command and put an at symbol in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then it just won't work. Um, but yes, you can, by running a command I will not mention, you can look this up on your own. Uh, you can cause systemd to be in a constant wait state, which will cause services to not restart or function properly. Although, uh, this guy makes it a fairly big, bigger deal than it actually is. Because, yes, this is, this is a bad issue, um, but it is a local exploit. So if you have access to this box and you're going to crash a box, there, there are easier ways to do it. You, can, you could always nuke a Linux box in under 140 characters. It's called a fork bomb. You can do it without even using any like alphanumeric characters. But lo and behold, this guy has sort of um, made his distaste for systemd very, very public and has blown this issue fairly out of proportion. Yes, it's bad. Yes, systemd does have problems with separation and its general monolithic nature. But this is not that bad because ultimately this can be fixed with a simple reboot. Yeah, but I mean, there is that argument there that, you know, to quote that article, where he said, the only job of Pit One is to execute the real in its system and reap zombies. And I was just like, man, I love Linux. We get to say stuff like that with a straight yeah, face. Yeah, kill, and, kill orphans, reap zombies. Yes. Um, but, I mean, he is saying, man, he just, let's not try to shove the um, kitchen sink into that, man. It might not be. Yeah, a good idea. yeah. And I mean, System D is somewhat compartmentalized, but they could do a little better job and focus a bit more on security because it is a fairly large tack vector. And Mr. Leonard Pottering, Mr. Leonard, do no wrong Pottering, mm. uh, has some opinions that uh, may, may not be popular. Um, but I mean, th this is a this is a thing. I mean, you, um, you need to you need to be aware of it and. Uh, put some proper uh, uh, precautions in place. Yeah, I mean, it's already been fixed. There was a bug report about it. Uh, there's already a patch out there. It's, like you said, it's uh, local DDoS, and it's received a lot of attention just because it seems it's system D, because a few days ago, there was a similar uh, vulnerability in bind, so the, the major DNS service. And it was and, a remote vulnerability I mean, too. Yeah, but no one cared. 
and you didn't hear about this or anything, but this is system D. So this is the the software that people love to hate. And yeah. because Vim versus Emacs is old school, now you got to be <laughs> system D versus upstart or, <laughs> or whatever the units. one uh, Slackware uses. I forget what it's called. OpenRC, I think. Yeah, I mean, everybody, but you know, this was definitely coming across as you know the original article. Those guys was like, man, I really don't like System D, and oh look, here's a reason to poo poo all over it. That's yeah, the thing. So man. there's a bug in the software. So just just remove it all all together and just start from and scratch. No, that, Strider, that, you don't that's... understand. We need to just scorch Earth and rebuild it from scratch because there was yep. a bug. That's that's how the and done. Not, not even not even that. There's the whole issue of responsible disclosure, right? You identify mm -hmm. a bug and then you forward it to the right people so that they can fix it before you start screaming and making it public and have all the script kiddies start writing their one-line bash scripts to do it. But, you know, this guy hates System D and so more death to it, the better, I guess. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, before uh, we're going to get off this holy war, but before we're going to ignite a new one between um, KDE and Gnome users, we need to thank the um, beautiful, beautiful people who make this show possible. Yes, and if you want to be one of those people that we consider beautiful, even though you might not be, but we, you're beautiful in our eyes, you can head on over to patreon.com slash linuxgamecast. It makes this very, very possible. You can also head on over to linuxgamecast.com slash support the shows. And if you don't want to go the Patreon route, we got some Amazon affiliate links that let you buy stuff and support us. And it actually does help. Yes. It may not it may not seem like a lot, but if you just if you are a frequent Amazon shopper, it really, really does help because those pennies pay for our servers and not twitch's servers that apparently have crashed so i don't know um but yeah uh, patreon is making this very show possible weekly daily wednesday would not be possible without your support uh we have a new donor or rudy upped and um just the psa guys uh check your credit card bills because if um you have not paid the your pledge will not go through well it's coming up on the end of the month and i think we had a few to we decline pledges this month i didn't get a chance to really go over it but you know hey give it a look if you think about it we got some rewards on there uh we do the whole value for value we want to give you definitely some stuff back definitely want to thank rudy for upping his pledge um you get some early access to a lot of videos that we do i think there's almost 100 up there just for the patreons and uh one thing i want to make a mention is we kind of updated the crossing the streams that's one of our mm -hmm. goals coming up it's about 15 dollars away that will allow us to schedule two additional live streams a week. So we're not talking about just gaming. We're talking about being able to prototype new shows, how-tos, instructional videos. I definitely want to see, you know, a 35-minute uh, long video of Strider sitting in the corner hugging that Lutris poster, smiling. <laughs> we'll just make that. It'll be its own show. It'll be amazing. It'll be the best show ever. Yes. And it's like uh, uh, We will definitely be able to do some more. You know, gaming, which is just called us having conversations and screaming at each other while multiplayer games are going on in the background. So, if that's your thing, it sounds like something you would like, head over there, check it out. Keep in mind, Patreon was started by a husband and wife team. They're all not like sick corporate people. That's why Omplibus. we like them. Yes. But let's get into GNOME 3.22 because it's out. And wh why should I care? Um, you should care because, I mean, if you don't use GNOME, then... You should probably not care. I do use uh, GNOME Shell right now. I uh, do like it quite a bit. And this is like the first release of GNOME that has the Flatpak integration. So you can like install software and even if the like, if GNOME software gets updated in the future, then you just can install uh, flat Flatpaks for it. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's add some more package management to this mess. Yeah, I mean, you got it's tip something, and Pam. It's becoming a thing with uh, either uh, Flatpaks or uh, Ubuntu's uh, snaps, uh, and to a lesser degree, so app images. They also work the same way. So they they did uh, integrate some developer tools so that people will be able to to make Flatpaks more easily. Uh, other than that, they. They brought a new re renaming uh, tool, uh, so like you you will be able to bulk rename files using a pattern or stuff like this. You all will also will be able to share photos 
uh, with the, the photo app. Like, if you want, to I, I, I don't, I don't want to share the photos that I'm taking with the photo app. Let's let's be real here. They're they're for my <laughs> consumption and my consumption only. That's, that depends on what type of photos you take. Yeah, but if you want to send it into a Google service or by email, then you can do that now. Uh, the the software. Uh, the software app also integrates with Flatpaks now, and it got like uh, some visual updates, so that's that's quite cool. And they made some progress with uh, Wayland, so it's less glitchy and mm -hmm. yes. And maybe, maybe someday in the far future we may be able to move away from the X Windows Server, and I won't have to look at an xorg.conf, and my life will improve drastically. No, xorg.conf are fun to look at. <laughs> oh yeah, you're you're one to talk. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I haven't that, that was touched me all day uh, yesterday for years. So. I'm definitely looking at it. And the flat pack, you know, the next generation application framework from Linux, quote unquote. Let, let let's not talk like that. That that angers and confuses me. Flat packs, uh, app images to a lesser extent, snap packages. Uh, snap snap packages are the feature, man. Yeah, They're man. All along, the along with the mirror, mirror uh, that Wayland thing's never going to take off. Uh, but. That's a really interesting use case that I, I kind of changed my opinion on a few weeks back when I was trying out the um, animation uh, package because they're like, okay, you know, here's just an app image. And after I went to Google, I was like, how do I launch app? And because I never touched the filthy animals. And I was like, oh, oh, that's it. It's contained. Boom, just run it. And I was like, that's neat for testing stuff out, but I don't want that duplicated, I don't know, 4,000 times for different applications I have running throughout my system. So... Mm. Well, might, might be the, handy for something like Lutris, but yeah, yeah. The, the flat packs do remove some duplication because they download like uh, ro ro GNOME runtimes. So they have this, for example, a runtime for GNOME three point twenty two, mm -hmm. and you won't have to download this a bunch of times. Okay. So I mean, it does remove some duplication. The the sad thing about that release is uh, I, I would want to try it, but it won't uh, hit Ubuntu until maybe 1704. So be patient. Man, Strider, yeah. if there was only a way to, I don't know, clone repos and compile the source. Um, uh, yeah, compiling well, DEs I mean, I is like its own little bit of nightmare fuel. I totally understand waiting for the distribution to churn that out. Yeah, no, or no, I could no, no, just no. Uh, switch my uh, Tumbleweed install to GNOME. Yeah. Um, and I would have this this release. Well, let's talk about the um, superior desktop environment. Um, you mean LXDE? No, no, it's talking about XFC. We're talking about KD again at 20. They're still rocking out some new stuff. We got Plasma 5.8 LTS because you need an LTS for Plasma, apparently. That is a thing. It's, it, um, it's slightly better than the unstable platform that GTK is, right? I don't know. Just, just their first salvo really graphically, you know, for your eye holes right out of there. They're like, desktop widgets cover your desktop and useful widgets to keep you up to date okay um um here, 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 here's the thing okay this, this is some advice from old man ben if you ever go to anyone's house and their desktop is just covered in widgets run i was gonna say add some more like <laughs> bring their system down with all the widgets, widgets. just cover it like really like no place for the wallpaper or nothing that will be it. Come on, confusing and look nice at the same time. But um, but yeah, no, they have some Wayland support in the new Plasma as well. And apparently, clipboard contents are synced between X11 and Wayland applications, which is actually really handy because this was an issue with Wayland for a long time hmm. due to due to some of the security architecture in there. Um, but yeah, you can grab the source. You can wait for someone to package it for your distribution. If you use Arch, then it'll probably be they're in some half workable state in the next couple of days. Yeah, it should hit also Tumbleweed, like uh, open source Tumbleweed and Debian Sid in the next weeks, maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, usually Debian, De Debian Sid is a bit slower to adopt new stuff, but yeah, I, I should but check on Tumbleweed. Debian doesn't adopt new so software? Shock. I don't know, <laughs> man. It's been a long time since I've really into KD. I, I set on you know back in the 1x days well before one but i think like 1.3 i think was the great day for kde and that series and 4.0 was just nightmare fuel looking at this and the latest updates we're seeing for kde uh well, what, what's the deal hashtag jerry seinfeld because uh, are they just focused on just eye candies like it's pretty 
Uh, is not that really, the because thing? there's there, there is that one feature that I really want mm -hmm. is the phone integration, and it will it allows you to um, uh, like display um, text messages onto your desktops. Okay. So it can also I, 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 actually that is super handy because I hate typing on like little shitty. Yeah, I mean, if you can like type like text messages from your desktop, like receive them, it can also like mute your music when you're receiving calls. Mm -hmm. All this like neat stuff, and I wonder if I can get this working in GNOME. No, no. Th though I, w I wonder how many remote exploits through the security minefield that is android would be exposed to your linux box through that <laughs> maybe a couple well strider can i can i ask you a personal question about your mobile uh yeah do it will it blend uh probably yes and especially if you use an updated version of blender because it received um an i'd say like a major update uh this week and it's got plenty of new stuff. So we got, uh, okay, this new uh, render engine called the Cycles engine uh, got updated and it's like a lot better now. Uh, they also have support for VR rendering, so like stereoscopic uh, rendering, so you can do that now. Uh, they have updated like uh, real-time rendering in the viewport, so this uh, this got improved as well. They have a new freehand curve. Uh, you can draw like stuff on 3D surfaces. Uh, it will also work with a tablet, like a pressure support is supported. So this is good. Uh, they have brought uh, something called the grease pencil for 2D drawing, uh, which allows you also to, to mix some 2D and 3D uh, together. So kind of neat if you want to draw some cartoons into some 3D scenes. And like they have a whole bunch of other features and improvement bug fixes. I mean, if you are a Blender user, you'll probably want to switch as soon as possible. Yeah, some of the backend it's... stuff that they've thrown in this first pro tip, guys, don't put animated GIFs on your front page, man. Just don't. All right. I, I, know, I know you got somebody that thinks that's a good idea. It's not. But they've added support for the NVIDIA 10X series and also improved support for the 980 Ti and Titan series. Uh, that's pretty neat. Updates like this definitely make me wish that I, I'd stuck because I, I bought the Blender book back in like 98, 99 when it had that did nightmare that, UI and you needed that book that to blend? navigate that moonscape to oh. uh, do anything. And I never stuck with it. And I see it doing all this... Um, wicked neat nifty stuff these days it's like man all right whatever then i was like hey mr fox dog will you fix this for me <laughs> yeah no uh, blender's been pretty good about improving the usability that was one of the big complaints for a while and so they took on a big effort a couple of years ago to make it more along the lines of 3ds max or one of the other more popular 3d modeling software yeah I mean, i've i've been starting using blender like last year i had never touched it before and I think it's a good time to start toying with Blender because it seems to to be so much easier to to use it than it was a few years ago. Okay. So if you want to to like start using Blender, like right now is a good time to do it. Okay. So we'll, we'll, well, well after this episode, not right now. Something yeah, from not the right Mozzie now. Wiki. Uh, so oh, this yeah. is Ugh. this is a new initiative coming from Mozilla, and what they want to do is. Uh, fix their PDF viewer. So right now there's this PDF user, uh, viewer uh, using JavaScript and it's kind of broken. Uh, so what they want to do is use uh, PDF Yum, uh, which is used in Chromium. So they, they need for that to to implement some some of the Pepper API, which is also used by Flash, by the way. And right now, this is uh, so it's called the mortar. Yeah, it's got to stop here. It's called the mortar project. But yeah, since this thing is going project. to be using the pepper and it's going to try to bring Flash back, can we just uh, all agree to just rename this project Mordor? Wouldn't that be more apt? I'm okay with that. I mean, 
She one, one does not simply walk into that minefield. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, how about how about we just stop using flash, guys? I right? mean, there was there was all this talk like earlier this year. Oh yeah, we're sending flash kill bits. We're just gonna be done with it. Just hmm. Do it already. Come on, people. And you were telling wow. me the PDF thing. I, I don't normally use Foxfire uh, a lot. I'm pretty much into the Chromium camp, but uh yeah i was like wait, wait pdfs are broken on fox fire but you, you're like no not really I, I mean i mean i read pdfs on firefox a little bit and i've never ran into any issues i mean yes there are there uh, pedro mentioned a couple of the security issues in the show notes but pdf based exploits have been around since people thought hey what if documents could do more than just display text right mm-hmm. um strider why do you love flash and think it should make a comeback and replace um, html5 and uh, it won't. It won't. And I don't think they will uh, implement a full Flash uh, player into to Firefox because that would require some closed source uh, code. So what they want to do, that what I, they seem to be doing, is implementing like a minimal version of. I don't know if what they're doing because it's still in a closed repo, so we. We still don't know yet. Well, what they exactly say, yeah, this doing. is definitely going to be like an um, attachment or a plugin or whatever they call. Yeah, yeah but and if- Mo- Mozilla's plugin architecture is actually pretty good because it's the ever, ever since that whole encrypted media extension thing became a thing, uh, they've they've been working on ways to essentially allow you to consume the media but still isolate the DRM stuff from everything else in Firefox. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, um, do, you, do you got something final to put on that? Yeah, I mean the. the- the fact that they will bring uh, a Pepper API into Firefox means that we'll be able to get rid of the, the other Flash plugin, the NP API. Mm-hmm. So at least we'll have just one one plugin. So that mm-hmm. will be... I, I, I don't have any plugins. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, but anyway, That's your choice. S- spe- speaking of plugging stuff in. Simple, secure, private, um, always end to end. Yes, we're talking about Wire from Wire.com. No ads, no profiling, full end-to-end encryption. Yeah, it's another audio video client that kind of works on the web. Um, text, voice, and video media on Wire or always, you know, it, it does the whole security spiel and i was like well you're not collecting data you're not doing ads you're not doing tracking uh it, it kind of made me go so what, what exactly is your business model which kind of terrifies me i told strider about it and strider is just like oh it doesn't have an official linux app and i'm like i put it in here because we didn't have an electron story last week and strider's like shut up Vin." <laughs> yeah i mean it seems to be an electron app even on windows and os x and if you go on their github repo they say you can build it on Linux, but it's experimental and unsupported. So, I mean, they, they don't care about Linux at all because it's quite simple to, to get an Electron app and okay, get it Okay, on, on a scale of like one to two, do, do you think they care more about Linux than, oh, I don't, Microsoft? Um, at least Microsoft does have... Send your hate uh, mail to Strider. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft does, does have the, the Skype for Linux Alpha, which is like supported and everything. So, uh, I mean, there's... You can do a whole lot of like um, chat clients with the WebRTC things. And yes, it will be uh, end-to-end and it can be encrypted if you want. So... Now that WebRTC is a thing, it's got just m- much more easier to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, talks, to, uh, talks. To, so this is another chat client uh, was doing this, this the same thing uh, like two years ago. It wasn't using WebRTC. Uh, you also got Ring that does the same thing. So you have all these options if you want to you try a bunch things. of options that grandma doesn't use so they don't really mean anything that's really part of the adoption factor that's kind of thrown in. i'm gonna give you a yeah. little bit of free advice if you're at home thinking about making the next great thing you're like i'm gonna use WebRTC, so you're gonna package it in chromium make sure you have options to disable echo cancellation and automatic gain control those are the main you want podcasters like us to use that those have to be in there or it's not even considered and, you know, there, there's that whole relevant XKCD thing. Oh, there's five competing standards. We need to come up with a new product to unify them. And now there are six competing standards. Uh, I'm glad to see there's a lot of competition in this space, though, because hopefully something good will come out of it that will dethrone Skype as the de facto audio video chat client. Um, but, yeah, we were good at the, talking the, the, about it's, it's, it's Thunderdome now, um, really. 
you know, Skype has basically abandoned their standalone client on Linux. No updates in the last four years. And the last update to it was to remove HD video support. Yes, um, as, as, we, as we found out. Right. That was definitely a thing. Uh, I was like, come on. Uh, and Jordan just laughed manically for almost 30 minutes straight. When I was like, maybe they'll just open source that and give it to people since they're moving away to... Um, yeah, that really hurt my stomach. I shouldn't. I shouldn't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the Linux Mint blog. Yes, Mint's still a thing. It's still a distribution. It was once the super darling of the world. Now it's Arch. Uh, they, they they got a mini box Mint Pro, man. I mean, it's just as small as the original mini box, but uh, it's a hundred dollars more. So I uh, guess what it has about a hundred dollars worth of um, improvements. From storage to 120 gigs, that's got 8 gigajoules of RAM. It is using the A10 Micro SoC from AMD, so that's going to get you AMD graphics on Linux. We know that is just nightmare fuel. Dual band 802.11 AC mini, Bluetooth 4.0, not all for 395 wet, stinky caches. Now, gentlemen, you know, I was definitely looking at that, and I was like, all right, so so it's the, uh, yeah, uh, hmm. Well, what exactly would would you do with this? I I just uh, I I mean, if you want to set someone up with a cheap computer, say grandma, for instance. Okay. Uh, mm. she just she really just needs something Raspberry that you Pi can 3. plug into. Yeah. Well, if you don't if you don't want to deal with some of the incompatibility issues with the Raspi and the ARMv seven or eight or sixty four architectures, I mean, yeah, was there really? But I, I agree with you to some extent. Is there really much a demand for this? Because Intel Nux exists, and they're fairly cheap, and you get decent performance because yeah, you have I'm Intel on Linux. On that. I was like, but wait, maybe you could make a little... I was like, no, you're not making a Steam box for those graphics, dude. Um, not, not really. You, you can oh, probably maybe, maybe some streaming. emulators, mm -hmm. but uh, I mean, that's about it. I mean, it's quite a bold move that they're using Radeon graphics on the Linux box, but I mean, also they they can ship a fully open source system that way. If they and, don't and they do have a video card that's compatible with the Radeon Pro driver stack, so at least you're going to get Vulkan. You're going to get some of the better, mm -hmm. a more stable-ish uh, Radeon drivers as opposed to FGLRX. Slash and I guess we do have to keep in mind that ultimately you are going to be paying for support with this as well. So when mm -hmm. something goes complete south on you, you'll be like, all right. Yeah, I, I would I would trust Mint support though, considering they just sometimes just copy pasta packages from Ubuntu. Huh. So, mm. yeah, that should definitely be a thing. Well, we've had to at least tell people about it. So, indeed. Oh, oh yes, this because you know, okay, e empty brought this up uh, in an, our private chat a while ago. This is basically System D on Windows. It writes itself. Uh, but this is uh, there is that uh, Ubuntu line li Linux is not an emulator, whatever the hell it is in Windows 10 that allows you to have a Linux or Ubuntu environment. Uh, running in your PowerShell or Windows command prompt. Uh, and they've upgraded it from 14.04 to 16.04. So you're going to get the new packages. You're going to get the new Ubuntu sauce. And yeah, if you're going to be using Windows for a Linux development, I suggest you go outside, find a nice power drill, and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I still have to, to um, test this out because it's surely interesting. I mean, uh, I'd like to see how it works. Uh, how capable the the Ubuntu inside Windows is, but I mean, I've got a I've got a, um, a Windows copy with uh, the Windows Insider account linked in, but I mean it's on my laptop. Was it on that laptop, laptop you melted as you're giving out um, advice? For yes, yeah. and I'm receiving the replacement parts uh, like in a few days. So okay. maybe next week. Uh, which, which will then melt. <laughs> uh, yep. Um, and at least the, the one thing they did is they have upgraded uh, Ubuntu to 16.04 like everyone should have done a long time ago. I mean, mm -hmm. ev everyone, right, Van? No, 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 no. Even, so you, even me? You, you're pushing, not, Ubuntu user? Um, not understanding why you would stabilize an LTS platform. Um, Microsoft has recommended upgrading to 16.04, and Matthew just recommended upgrading to 16.04. Sit back and just think about that before you do anything. Oh, <laughs> uh, you just make out already, you two. I'm, 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 I'm sick of all the tension. You, you can, you can just cut it with something or other. Yeah. Would, would but, you I mean, trust I mean, the word up, up from a person who can't hang a poster? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he was trying too for about twenty minutes. That was, that was pretty funny. 
It keeps falling down. Yeah. If you support 1604, you support not hanging posters correctly. That's just the end of the story. And that's going to be the end for the news. But we do have a couple of slices of pie this week, uh, starting out with the Pixels. So, Ixel. yeah, the Pixel is a new Ixel. desktop for, for uh, Raspbian. Ixel. Okay, gee. Okay, we should tell Jordan you worked with the Pi Fedora, whatever, something. I, I, I may have had some initial work supporting the piece of hardware, yes. Yes, okay. Done. Full uh-huh. disclaimer. Um, yeah, so th- this is a whole new uh, desktop. Well, not whole new, but they, they have updated the, oh the God, visuals. Oh, my now. And they, they moved from this uh, kind of like old school LXD desktop to a much like modern uh, modern wine. So they, they have uh, updated the team to, to I'm make sorry. It All right, Jordan, are you serious? It's called Pipe. So I, uh, <laughs> it's I, I'm just making that up, but I, I told I okay. Well, you can Pixel. just eat a bag of hammers, sir, because I was about to say if you want me to ever say it, Pike, so that I would have to be lowercase. I apologize, Matt. You continue. <laughs> yeah, so by the way. Pixel or Pixel, whatever you want to call it, uh, stands for Pi Improved X Windows Environments Lightweight. Um, and yeah, they, they, uh, they, 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 whole... they really needed to backronym that one, didn't they? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, they did had uh, a new splash screen, like new wallpapers, uh, icons, which Ooh, I'm not a big a sense fan of. Later in here, that kind of makes it worth it by itself. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm not a huge fan of the, the icons because, like, they, they, I don't know, they, they look like a bit old and like uh, childish. Mm-hmm. So even like, yeah, the the Raspberry Pi is targeted partly at kids, but still, I mean, I would switch the the icons if I would have to use it. Uh, the the, the windows look good. Uh, the fonts that was a nice move to use the infinity font rendering. So I'm there is like there are very few distros that get font font rendering right. This is quite nice to have like nice fonts. I do like this. Uh, they have also um, enhanced the, the login screen. Uh, the wireless switcher, and they have bought like new applications like a real VNC viewer, and a bunch of other stuff. So that's nice, nice thing. I mean, um, whenever I get to Raspberry Pi three, I will be testing this. One thing that I think might cause a bit of controversy is, uh, yeah, they, they went from that wicked lightweight browser to uh, Chromium. But they threw you some U-Block in there to make up for Chromium not being as fast as a wicked lightweight browser. Uh, uh, the poor two gigabytes of RAM on that Pi, that's that's going to get nom-nommed real quick by Chromium. <laughs> hey, man, you, you could uh, open a tab. What are you talking about? <laughs> yes, I can open a tab and load a web page. And then Speaking refresh of swap space. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, well, let's lock it down. All right. So this is from Hackaday. Um... They have a way to lock up your Raspberry Pi with Google Authenticator. There is a apparently a PAM module. Those of you who are not familiar with the <laughs> pluggable authentication modules, maybe should not read this because you will brick your system if you start messing around with PAM and you don't know what you're doing. No, I, I can just copy pasta all this stuff, right? And just put it in the abso- Absolutely. Okay. Uh, but they, they have a couple good tips uh, using, using SSH uh, keys as opposed to passwords. Uh, allowing uh, completely disabling password authentication challenges on SSHD. And uh, a little more questionable tip here is to use the PAM Google Authenticator plugin, which will allow you to send to integrate with Google Authenticator. I actually use it for a couple services, including my Google um, account. Two-factor authentication is good. That, yes. let's, let's just let's just say put that up there. It right is now. annoying, yeah. but it is good. Yeah. It is. It lets you use really crappy passwords because your other password keeps changing all the time. But um, this will allow you to use your Google Authenticator passwords with uh, with SSHD, which is kind of handy. Although it is kind of questionable trusting your security to Big Brother like that. Mm. Well, you're not I, I getting access to your, your Raspberry Pi to Google. I mean, it's just another method of authentication. Right, and you, there there are other yeah. two factor off. The tools you can use like YubiKey, although they close source their stuff, so I can't really plug them. Blackmail. Um, I mean, lots of two factors and solutions. Yeah. Mm. 
Uh, um, yeah, I was but, looking yeah, at this, but I mean, it's definitely using the Googs for security, and I was like, yeah, that's a bit ironic, isn't it? Didn't Google just release a uh, their version of Amazon's uh, Collectotron Alexa, yeah. for information? So, so what do you do? Just like walk in, cover those in aluminum foil, like, ha ha, I've defeated you, even though I just spent five hundred dollars on you. Yeah, uh, and then then you stick it in the microwave and stick. When you get to the actual situation, I think the heart of this project is uh, you're two factoring a pie. All right, hmm, wow, okay, plug, put in pocket, walk away with it. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I mean, this is this is all applicable to standard Linux boxes, right? They right. related to Raspberry Pis because people who use Raspberry Pis don't necessarily primarily use Linux. Mm -hmm. um, they're just using Linux on the Pi because it is the best option, as opposed to that Windows Ten garbage. Mm -hmm. But um, it is definitely a thing. There is some definitely there's definitely some good tips in here too um, for just securing your remote access to your box, including installing fail to ban, disallowing root logins, so on and so forth. So that is the thing if you want to improve security on your linux box and that's not even necessarily your raspi this is a thing mm. to look at you can install on um, like an ubuntu or debian you can install libpam dash google dash authenticator and you will have all the the libraries and commands for you to do that on any linux box so and uh, just remember um, once you've done that you've just bricked your box send up some hate mail because it's actually really easy you just head over to linuxgamecast.com Hit the contact button, fill out the little bit here, make sure it's, or if you like watching, um, HTML Linux forms. Yes, or Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Pop that in, enter a captcha, leave us a comment on YouTube, thumbs up, like, subscribe. I love saying that because it's so cheesy and dirty. Um, <laughs> leave us a note on the Patreons. We're always going to get back to you there because you are supporting the show. So we, you know, it's kind of sorry there's a bit of prioritization on Twitch. Anywhere you can get a hold to us, and we will do our best to get back to you. Not a whole lot, because we kind of had a long one from uh, one of our co-hosts on Linux Gamecast Weekly from last week, uh, Mr. T. Han, had some strong words to say about Pedro. Uh, yes, he does. He says, at 4420, Pedro is factually correct that the Raspberry Pi Zero lacks an HDMI port. It does, however, have a mini HDMI, so all you need is an adapter, and he provides a little picture. The DSi port, which is used for the touchscreen, uses a different signaling method and is not HDMI compatible in any way. And at 50 minutes, 43 seconds, Pedro's claim that the Pi 3 has gigabit Ethernet <laughs> is incorrect. It uses the same SMSC LAN 9514 to provide the 10100, aka the fast Ethernet, piggybacked on the USB, as all versions of the Pi, he is absolutely correct. Raspberry Pis have never had gigabit networking, which is quite sad. Um, I, I wish they provide a gigabit option, because otherwise, because otherwise, it would be great as a media box. But instead, I'm stuck with fast Ethernet, and that's no good. Well, I mean, even for a standard media box of one or two users, man, I mean, use ten one hundred if you want to. It's not like if, if you want to. If you want to, I mean, you're not going to have the um, YOLO swag and the Dorito, but uh, I mean, it's going to be serviceable. Yeah, if you can get gigabit on these things, you know, uh, startup companies are going to be making new routers and switches with them because that's... Abs absolutely. I, w I would love to have it just a little arm box acting as a router or a switch because I hate those little prepackaged things because these, these days with the FCC firmware lockdown thing... You can't really. There's. It's harder to install it or to set up your own router. I just love this picture because I, I can just hear empty in my head going. It's right here as he's in Gemp drawing the red arrow. Yeah, <laughs> right here, guys. I'm gonna go to the bar now, but it's here. Yeah, and you forgot the last word of that feedback, which which is shame. So shame I'm, I'm sorry. Pedro. You need you need a bell in order to say that, right. Strider. <laughs> I don't have a bell near me, so. <laughs> So right. you can't say it. Jeez. <laughs> Breaking the rules, but that's going to do it for our show this week here at Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. We shall return next week. Um, and if Twitch doesn't mess up, uh, we might be back there. Or if a lot of people are like, stay on YouTube. I like the YouTubes better for the live show. We might come back over here. Who knows? This could have been a sign. Um, but yeah, um, I've been Vin Stone. You can find me at Vin Stone on the Twitter nets plus Vin Stone on the G pluses. I'm Jordan Swung. You can find me completely wasted out of work and down at the Burning Pool on Twitter, plus Jordan Swung on Google+. And you can find me on Twitter at uh, Strikor and on Google+, at Mathieu Commando. All right. Well, let's see you next week. Booga booga. Booga booga indeed. Booga, Breaking booga. the law. Breaking the law. Breaking the law. Breaking the law.